you done now? Oh, Brad, what have you done now? And we have the producer and creator of the show, Steve and Chris. How are y'all doing today? Hey, hey, man. You didn't have to get dressed up for us. I, I know, Brad, you look so, I, I feel like I'm in a hoodie. You're just, you look great and amazing. So we, we got to step up our game. Should we start this over like in a half an hour and let us go get cleaned up? I can give you some time if that's what you need. I mean, <laughs> you got, we, first of all, we know you got shorts on, so you're not fooling us. <laughs> But I actually pajama bottoms. But nevertheless, guys, we're here to talk about Psych 3. This is Gus. Uh, look, I've been a Psych fan since the show came out back in 2006 or whenever it was. Uh, always loved loved the show. I got to start off with one thing, though, Steve. Um, I got like, I, it's not like an issue that I have. Okay. It's not, it's not a problem or anything. But Psych was able to tackle so many great things. Uh, and I And I mean, like going back for the 100th episode and doing Clue the Movie remade. You're, you're doing the 1967 uh, uh, Psych Odyssey and kind of doing these period <laughs> and these different thematic shows. My favorite film of all time is Back to the Future. So much I wrote a book on it. Why didn't we do a time travel psych? Why? Brad, you are just preaching to the choir right now. It, it famously, I've been trying to do a time travel episode each season. I have a board, a board a little bit like that, and I would put the ideas of the worlds I wanted to be in. Time travel was there for seven of the eight seasons. And every time we tried to break it, the, the only way we could really get the thing to it is, is if Sean and Gus actually did travel through time. And the network, network was not cool with that. So, so to me, my goal is like if maybe the next thing I do I can uh, I can incorporate time travel to it and make me the happiest thing. And I will agree with you that of of my favorite movies of all time, Back to the Future, definitely in the time uh, top five. Uh, and uh, and I want I want to know what your book is because I'm going to go buy it as soon as I. Uh, as soon and as I and let's not forget that we did have Chris Lloyd on the series. It, you know, <laughs> we did that for you. It, it, you did that exclusively for me in in the Clue episode because <laughs> Chris right. Lloyd. Holds a unique distinction. In 1985, played both a doctor and a professor, right? <laughs> around and, um, but, but Chris, talk to me about uh, more so going into this Peacock era with the films and, and having these three films that all come out in Peacock. This one, this is Gus. Why was going to the, 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 the made-for-TV streaming movie the right way to go for Psych? Because we thought the series was over. Well, it was the right way to go because it was the only way we could do it with our actors, first of all. So like once we ended the series and uh, and everybody wanted to move on to other projects and did, um, then it becomes and that's it becomes a tricky thing. And that's that's what's tricky to this day is timing out these movies once the studio and the network decide they want another one and they say, OK, go. You know, it's like nobody realizes how difficult it is to actually plan for it because you write the script. but what if you're writing the script for a you know, big part for Maggie and then all of a sudden she gets another series and she's not available and then you have to shift, but you can't really shift because James is already on a series and he only has a window of two months, you know, from May to July. And then you can, and so it's just this moving target where you don't, you know, you don't have contracts on any of your actors. You don't know if you're going to be able to get, you know, your DPs and, your crew that is so essential to us because um, not only are so many of them like family and we spend so, so many years with them in Vancouver, but when we're up there, these guys know how to move. You know, they know how we shoot. They know how we like it. They know how fast to, to be able to move. They're, they're used to that, you know, seven day episode schedule where we're chasing weather up there and all that kind of stuff, which is what we want to shoot these movies on, not particularly that schedule, but on that pace for sure. So um, it becomes it becomes really tricky, and the only way to do it is to try to figure out how to do one movie. We actually wanted to do two movies back to back. We thought that was a smart, economical way to do it. Um, to the, you know, like Back yeah, to the Future right. two and three. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, and and we had, we'd kind of planned for that and pitched that to the studio and the network, and then ultimately there was no COVID and James's availability and Dulé getting the pilot turning into a new series. Um, it just became impossible to be able to do more than one movie. So that's really the answer. That's why we're doing the movies because it's what we can squeeze in. Um, and, it's, and it's nice, you know, and it's nice to be able to do little, you know, 
two hour blocks of, uh, of, a, of a closed ended story and an open ended um, uh, open ended arcs of your characters, you know, where we, we know where we left off and we know where they're going. And so we can kind of just sprinkle in here's what's going on for a couple of couple of minutes in their life and then well, come I've, back to it. I've lo- I loved all three of the films. I think especially for us psych fans, getting more of these characters is always a great thing. And, and uh, to go back to Steve, Steve, I don't have a whole lot of time, but I have to ask, I don't know the genesis of the idea of the show as quickly as you can. Where did the idea for this fake psych detective come from? Uh, well, it, it comes from a lot of things. The, the core of it was that, you know, my dad was a um, was was police officer and wanted nothing more than me to become a police officer because, of you know, it's a steady job and, and, and insurance and all those things. And uh, he also he also worked on the set of movies. Uh, and so I go visit him thinking he was, you know, getting me excited about police work. And I just got excited about movie work. And so, uh, so I ended up going into the, into the movie business and, uh, you know, Chris and I sold my, my first script. We went out and it became big daddy and, uh, and, you know, we started to do TV and I go, I should do something with cops. And I go, eh, I can't do a regular cop show. I mean, look at me, I don't, uh, I'm not, I can't do a standard thing. And I thought, you know what, what, uh, something that would be fun would be somebody who doesn't belong in the, in the middle of an investigation at all and thinks it's the most fun thing in the world. And, uh, the idea of a fake psychic, uh, uh, came out of that. And, uh, and here we are. So I had the, I had the character of Henry and Sean already uh, um, from Jump Street. So it was, uh, it was really exciting. Okay, I didn't know that. That's awesome. Uh, Psych 3, this is Gus. It's it's more of a focus on Gus and, and Selene's relationship. It's a real real fun fun watch for everybody out there. It goes comes down uh, November the 18th on Peacock. Real quick, last question for you because I'm about to have to wrap. Both Chris, Steve, I got to know, favorite episodes? Uh, it, you know, it, it depends. For me, it's a musical because we got to do a two-hour musical. Um, the most fun I ever had on episode was the Harry Potter episode, uh, that we did in season eight, the uh, lock stock, two smoking barrels and, uh, uh, and whatever. And, uh, to me, the, 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 my, the one that I enjoy the most is, uh, because I didn't write or direct it and I get to just, uh, enjoy it as a, as a viewer is office space. Oh, uh, just because it's just, it's so crazy fun. Office Space, Andy Berman did an amazing job with that. Um, Dual Spires uh, for me, uh, you just grew up on Twin Peaks as as did many of us. And it was just an homage that we wanted to do for years. And I just thought it turned out beautifully. Matt Shackman um, directed that for us and and the pilot. I always go back to the pilot because we saw so much magic between the boys for the first time ever. The pilot still holds up to this day. I rewatched the whole series. I don't know, maybe a month ago. Pilot still crushes it. Um, guys, the, the movie's great. And I'd love to give you both a copy of my book called Back from the Future. Oh. I'll, I'll find a way to send it to you. I'll, I'll shout you out on Twitter. How about that, for Steve? Uh, I, uh, I love it, Brad. It's, uh, by the way, I, I already looked it up. Look at that. I looked it up <laughs> on my phone. I was planning on buying it. I'm excited. Um, I'll, and I'll, uh, yeah, I'll it's. Uh, it, I will it, send you a signed copy. Yeah, that's, love uh, it. That's amazing. It's been a, uh, a lot of fun uh, talking to you, and you're going to make me dress better for the next set of days. You know what? If, if, you know, aspire. That's right. I'm trying to aspire and inspire. So uh, thank you, Steve. Thank you, Chris. This is Gus on Peacock, November the 18th. Guys, thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you, buddy.